Okay, so uh, today we're doing a rust texture, and um, this is really easy to throw together, and um, better yet than that, it's controllable too. So I have in my current node setup where there's a color ramp that separates uh, this dirty metal texture into black value and white value, which mixes together a rust texture and a no entry texture or <laughs> no entry, that's the name of the file, um, this uh, road closed sign texture. And when it's all together, that means that you can use this color ramp to control how much rust is going on this sign, which I think is super cool. So I'm gonna show you how I set this up. So um, it's pretty easy to do. I'm just going to add in a plane or some like random object to do this on. And um, I'm going to make a new texture for it. And let's see. To start things off, uh, you can just add in a picture of uh, the good old dirty metal texture or something like that that has some pretty high contrast so that we can add in a color ramp. And um, so now it looks like this. And I'm going to change this value to be constant. So from linear, I'm going to change it to constant. And what that does is when it's constant, um, it's either black or it's white, basically. So it's super good for uh, controlling levels. And uh, so I'm going to just move this up here. It'll be on its own. And then I'm going to add in a texture of uh, rust. So I just found this image um, online and I think you can too. It just it just looks like this basically. And um, I'm gonna plug this into the base color. Then I'm gonna add in a mix RGB shader and plug this in the middle here. Um, and I'm gonna put this uh, dirty metal color ramp mixture into the factor here. So now you'll see we're getting either the rust or like the base color. If you want to go one step further, like I did, you can add in like some other like metal color over top. Like I have this stainless steel texture that I put in that looks like this. And so what I did with that is I plugged that into the other side of the color ramp. Okay, so I'm going to drag this mix value here down into the normal. And I'm going to add in a bump and plug this into the height. And whoa, Nelly, I'm going to uh, turn this down just a little bit. By a little bit, I mean a lot, so that's barely visible. Just a tiny bit. We just only really wanted to show off the rust. So you could even add in another uh, color ramp. And uh, if you control shift uh, click on an object, you can make it be the thing that's uh, currently getting viewed. So that's what I'm doing here. And uh, I basically want it so that the rust has color, but the, uh, the background or the stainless steel is basically just solid. So I'm going to try and make it like this. Um, so now if I take a look at it, yeah, so now the rust is a lot more bumpy, but the stainless steel is much more uh, smooth. Cool. And I'm going to do a similar thing here for the um, metallic. I'm going to plug uh, the mix into the metallic. And I'm just going to duplicate up this uh, color ramp with Shift-D. And I'm going to plug it in uh, to here. OK. And once you got that to a place where it kind of has an offset between what's rust and what's metal, um, well, obviously it's all metal, but what's rust and what's like the normal metal, then you can uh, kind of do the same thing for the specular and roughness. So with specular, ooh, <laughs> with specular, basically um, parts that are white are much more uh, shiny and have more specular, and parts that are black has like zero specular. So you probably want to make the rust have a lot less specular, and then everywhere else can have some. It's like that. Uh, for the roughness, Parts that are black are the uh, least rough and are more shiny, and parts that are white are the most rough and are like more matte colored. So for this, we want the rust to be more white and the metal to be darker. 
So like that might be a little extreme. So maybe there. Okay. And that's basically how I did it. And then from there, because you have this uh, color ramp control here, so you can like um, fine tune exactly how much rust you want. But yeah, that's how I did it. Um, and you can fine tune any of this. Like it doesn't look perfect up close. You get some of these jagged edges. But if you did it with a, kind of a more high quality picture that wasn't pixelated like this, you know, it would work a lot better. But from far away, I think it actually looks pretty good, especially, oops, especially on like this sign. I think it came out looking quite nice. And it really can help create that like uh, over time, like it's getting weathered and it's been like ill used and you can even make it like all the way rusty. I don't know, pretty cool. Anyways, I hope this was helpful and I'll see you later.